Welcome, Ben Mama. This video is brought to you by A Compendium of Atari 8-Bit Games, Volume 1, by Kieran Hawken and AG Books. This full colour book features over 250 game reviews, developer interviews, fun facts and trivia, personal stories, and is the ultimate companion to Atari's groundbreaking 8-bit computer range. It is available in both hardback and paperback, and can be purchased worldwide from all leading bookstores, including Amazon, WH Smiths, Waterstones, Barnes & Noble, and Wordery. So what are you waiting for? Get your copy today! Those of you who follow my channel will remember that last summer I uploaded a video looking at the Atari XE Game System exclusives. And in the intro I explained that the video would purely cover cartridge based Atari 8-bit games and the disc and tape based games would be covered in a future episode. And here it is. As many will know, the Atari 8-bit is one of my favourite retro systems. I have an 800XL, 65XE, 130XE and an XE game system in my collection and it's been a real journey of discovery for me because I never owned or even played on one back in the day. I've come across better versions of games that I played on the ZX Spectrum as a youth, all time classics that never made it over to the UK computers, obscure hidden gems and simply incredible homebrew titles that push the hardware further than anyone ever thought possible. And it's that journey of discovery that's given me the knowledge and passion to produce this video, with so many titles fresh in my mind from this journey, rather than being nostalgia fueled, it was actually quite difficult to get it down to 10 titles I was happy with. Even now I'm thinking of a follow up because there are so many more titles that I'd like to share with you all. But yeah, here we are with that final, well for now anyway, list of 10 amazing exclusives for the Atari 8-bit home computer range. When it comes to home computers, the Atari home computer gets high grades. I use an Atari at home and I, I use it for word processing and to teach myself other programming languages. Well, the graphics are probably some of the best you can find. The Atari 800 computer not only allows you to play games, it also allows you to learn math and history. Only one computer lets you enjoy this library of over 2,000 enlightening and entertaining programs. Atari home computers. The more you learn, the more you can program and there's just no end to it. If you've ever played the home computer versions of Airwolf, but not the Atari 8-bit one because that's totally different, then you'll be right at home with Sidewinder, because it's suspiciously similar. In both games you are controlling a chopper that must try to negotiate a series of danger-filled cabins, to rescue somebody and escape. In both games you have to avoid getting caught in intermittent force fields, shoot through walls and make pixel perfect movements to avoid hitting them. There are a few small differences however, as in this one you also have to collect fuel to keep your copter in the air and the levels actually scroll, as opposed to being flick screen. What really sets Sidewinder apart from the game that seems to have inspired it however, is that it also features a level designer, so you can create your own perilous stages for you and your friends to work through. I have to say that this was a very unexpected but also very welcome addition to the package, and definitely helps raise that score up a notch. Visually the game is very impressive actually, with excellent use of colour and a good level of detail despite the small sprites. The audio is equally adept with great in-game sound effects as well as a terrific title tune from Oral Cornelius. There's certainly no doubt in that this is a pretty tough affair, but also a rather rewarding one, making Sidewinder a genuine contender. Here's a cool game from the earlier years of the Atari 8-bit that really caught me by surprise. 
The strangely named Wizzle can best be described as a cross between Konami's classic arcade game Scramble and Atari's own vector-based coin-op Gravitar. In the game, you fly a ship over a landscape trying to take out all the enemy installations without getting shot down yourself. As well as being careful to watch out for the enemy fire and crashing into the terrain, you also need to watch your fuel. This can be replenished by bombing a fuel tank, just like Scramble. While the Gravitar element becomes most prominent with the control of your ship, as you constantly battle gravity with your thrusters. Your ship is able to shoot lasers from the sides or drop bombs from below, which are much harder to aim, as these are affected by the movement of your ship and the gravity from below. Certain things also need to be taken out to open up more sections of a level. Wizzle is basically a constant battle against the environment around you, but in a good way. This game is far from a frustrating chore like Firebird's gravity-based shooter thrust. It's nothing special graphically, although it has a certain charm to it no doubt, and the same could be said of the sound, but the whole package just fits together really nicely. I really can't understand why Atari never earmarked this game for a bigger release, as it certainly deserved it. Legendary British software house Gremlin didn't release a huge amount of games for the Atari 8-bit computers, but those that they did are of their usual high quality, Zone X included. In essence, this is a clone of the classic Atari arcade game Gauntlet, but Zone X has one very key difference. You can't actually shoot anything. This means that you have to negotiate the mazes, collect the items, and avoid the enemies on skill and strategy alone. Thankfully, the enemies in this game all follow set patterns, so avoiding them is fairly easy once you work this out. That said though, Zone X is far from an easy game. In fact, at times, the difficulty level is absolutely brutal, as one small mistake will punish you and send you back to the start of the level. It's not just the enemies that kill you in this game either, you can even get trapped in doors as they open and close. Just like Gauntlet, you will also need to find keys to open locked doors and recover other items like the spade and valuable plutonium to help you reach the next level. Your only defence of any kind are mats, which can be collected and then placed in the path of an enemy to slow them down. Graphically, Zone X is excellent, with great use of colour throughout. There's also some nice music on the title screen and good in-game effects too. If you like dungeon crawlers, or you're looking for a game with some real challenge, then Zone X is definitely for you. It seems that Red Rat were very keen on trying to bring games to the Atari 8-bit that it otherwise would have missed out on, albeit as a tribute rather than anything official. We had Screaming Wings, a clone of Capcom's 1942, Domain of the Undead, a Ghosts and Goblins ripoff, and also this title, Hawk Quest, a pretty blatant copy of the popular Toeplan arcade game, Tiger Heli. That's not to say it's a bad game though, far from it in fact. Sword Quest is without doubt one of the most competent shoot em ups of its type on the Atari 8 bit. Probably the most impressive feature of Hawk Quest is the sheer number of enemies it throws at you. They are seemingly endless. You also have to contend with both ground based and aerial attacks too. Thankfully, your chopper is equipped with a dual weapon. So when flying foes are ahead, it simply shoots a stream of bullets forward, but when you line up your crosshair with the ground based targets, it drops a bomb, without the need to use different buttons. The speed this game keeps up is pretty impressive too and it only adds to the sense of urgency you experience as you play. The only real criticism would be that there aren't any kind of power-ups you can collect. 
Graphically, the game is pretty decent, particularly the colourful backdrops, but there's some fairly decent sound effects too. Shoot 'em up fans should definitely take a closer look at Hawk Quest. Mission Shark was originally released from Poland called Mizja, and also simply known as Mission. Originally published as part of a compilation by LK Avalon, it was later re-released on budget by Atari 8-bit stalwarts Zeppelin. This is an interesting title that mixes elements from a few other games, and can best be described as an arcade adventure. At first it looks much like Konami's classic Green Parade, but rather than just being a horizontally scrolling run and gun, you're required to go up and down ladders and jump across platforms as you explore the vast military race, trying to find four top secret canisters. As well as the enemy soldiers patrolling the base, you must also take down force fields, take out the gun turrets and avoid the mines. You're equipped with both a machine gun and some grenades to aid you on your mission, but both of these are limited, so you must look out for replenishments. You have limited health, which can also be topped up, and there's a handy mini-map in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. Mission Shark looks fantastic, the sprites are nicely animated, and the choice of colour works really well. Even better though, it's the superb music that plays throughout the game. This is the pokey chip at its very best. If you have an Atari XL or XE, then Mission Shark is one game that you should definitely seek out. You really won't be disappointed. Originally released by RK Plus under the title Night Rally, this great racing game would later be re-released by GameStar as Barger Buggies. The only difference being the change in graphics from night to day. It proved to be much more successful on Scott Orr's later label, who incidentally was the founder of EA Sports. I guess people prefer it with a bit of sunshine. It's also interesting in that it was specifically coded with the Atari 8-bit computers in mind. It's the graphics in this game that particularly stand out which are very much designed to take full advantage of the AH unique hardware. The huge sprites and winding roads move at a breakneck speed, with programmer Dan Ugrin utilising a number of hardware tricks to bring an arcade quality racing experience into the home. The game was also fairly unique for the time in that hitting other cars didn't cause you to crash, it merely slowed you down, something that would later become the standard in racing games of all types. Many magazines at the time lauded the game as a true competitor to pole position, and it's easy to see why, as the game very much impresses on the first few plays. Long term it probably doesn't have quite the same appeal, as it's a bit less exciting than Namco's more illustrious arcade game, but don't let that put you off as in either of its forms, Knight Rider or Barger Buggies, this title is up there with the very best racing games available for the Atari 8-bit.
It's safe to say that Red Rat software became a real favourite amongst Atari 8-bit owners over the years. Not only because of their unwavering support for the machine, but also because their games were usually pretty great. After a quick look at the screenshot, you'd be forgiven for thinking that Laserhawk is nothing more than a clone of the excellent Choplifter. It does look very similar, and it also takes the form of a horizontally scrolling shooter. But where Broderbun's game was all about saving people, Red Rat's product focuses on non-stop destruction. Your only real objective here is to destroy as many buildings and enemy aircraft as possible before you run out of lives. The best part is that the quest for the ultimate destruction culminates in you blowing up Commodore's HQ. That must have pleased a lot of Atari fans back in the day. In fact, when you start the game, it's Atari's building you take off from. The game gives you a choice of three different difficulty levels, as well as a two-player mode, but you take it in turns to try and achieve the high score. The action in Laserhawk is relentless. The enemies come at you non-stop, and everything moves at a very brisk pace. Graphically, the game is great, with lots of colour and some very nice detail. Sadly, there's no music at all, but the sound effects are suitably loud. Overall, Laserhawk is a very fun and frantic shoot 'em up. I have always been a huge fan of driving games, so when I was looking for some new ones to play on my Atari XC, I was quite excited to come across Iron Roadway. Not just because it was a game that I hadn't discovered before, but also because it looks so unique. It's a top-down racer of sorts, but uses an isometric style viewpoint rather than the standard look. This isn't something that I'd seen done on the Atari 8-bit before. The idea of the game is to race your high-powered sports car along the road to try and get to the next destination before you run out of fuel. Of course, this road also has other users. You must be careful not to smash into them and cause an accident. If you do hit another car, then an enormous nuclear explosion takes place. A bit severe, really. And you lose a life. Of which you have five. You lose all your lives or run out of fuel, and it's game over. One of the most interesting aspects of Iron Roadway is that you have gears, which you can change up and down at will. The gears are not just used to speed up, but also to slow down when you want to avoid heavy traffic. Each gear also pushes your car a bit further up the screen, so you can see far less of the road in front of you. The graphics might be a little bit blocky, and the sound is pretty standard, but Ion Roadway offers a decent challenge, has really well thought out controls, and most of all, it's extremely fun to play. Released on British Telecom's value for money budget label, the Extirpator is a pretty run of the mill horizontal scrolling shoot em up in all but one way. The single special feature is the stunning title tune by the legendary Rod Hubbard, who ranks among the very best music on the Atari AP. Those of you with a keen ear will probably recognise it from elsewhere too, and you'd be right, as the theme for the Extirpator was lifted straight from the classic Commodore 64 shooter's Sanxion with Rob adapting his own tune to take advantage of the pokey chip. As I mentioned, the game itself really isn't that remarkable. It's just your standard fly along, shoot everything, and move on to the next level affair. Admittedly, this is all done very well though, with attractive graphics and a nice range of different enemies. There's no music in game, sadly, just the noisy sound effects, although there is a little cheat you can use to get round this. 
I do have to mention the slick parallax scrolling though, which looks fantastic. Another interesting fact about this game is that it's also an Atari 8-bit exclusive. Quite surprising given that these budget games were often ported to everything under the sun. At the end of the day, the extra pater is never going to set the world alight in the gameplay department, but it's well worth buying just for that amazing Rob Hubbard soundtrack. <laughs> Is shoot em ups were all the rage, and the home computers of the time were home to seemingly endless clones of popular arcade games. So rather than produce yet another rip off of somebody else's game, programmer Philip Price, best known for the outstanding 8 bit RPG alternative reality, decided to throw some of the most popular into a big pot, give it a stir, and see what came out. A8 exclusive, The Tale of Beta Lyrae, combines elements from coin up classics such as Scramble, Defender, Vanguard, and Super Cobra. When it comes to shoot em ups, there really is only one thing that matters how much you get to destroy. So you'll be pleased to hear that The Tale of Beta Lyrae excels on this front. Initially, the game seems nothing more than a Scramble clone, but the absence of bombs means that some very precise positioning of your ship is required to take out those ground objects. What makes the design of the game even more interesting is that the landscape around you is randomly generated. So there is no way to memorise the levels. In fact, it will even change after you lose a life. Philip Price also designed the game so it adapts to your skill level. So if you really suck, it will make the enemy attacks a little bit less intense. Rounded off with some great graphics, excellent music and very solid gameplay, The Tale of Beta Lyrae is a very underrated shoot em up indeed. I can talk my parents into buying me an Atari 800XL. Huh, tell them all the things he can do for you. Right, I'll tell them it's got 256 colors and four sound channels. I don't know, that's a little technical. Why don't you tell them it'll help you learn music and art? Well, and there's integrated software for word processing, spreadsheets, forecasting. No, tell them it'll help you write term papers. I'll tell them it's expandable with serial link peripherals like modems and disk drives. Tell them it's your birthday. And that rounds out my look at 10 amazing exclusives for the Atari 8-bit computers. Can you think of any other exclusives for the groundbreaking 8-bit micro range that should have made the list? Or do you think some of these games were unworthy of inclusion? I always love to hear the thoughts and views of my audience, so please get typing in that comment section. Before I go though, I must thank all of my loyal patrons for continuing to support my channel and make videos like this possible. If I must give special thanks to the following patrons in particular, their much appreciated pledges. Mitchell Valentino, Neptune, Seth A. Robinson, Carl Olsen, Ozzy B, D. Vaughan, Dos Gamerman, and Electron Star Claps. If you also want to help support all my creative endeavours, including this YouTube channel, then please go and check out my Patreon right now. You can get access to a host of extra content, including downloads, exclusive videos, creative insights, and much more besides. I've been the Laird, I thank you for watching, and I'll see you all again for another video very soon.